Welcome back to Capital Tonight. I'm Susan Arbetter. New York State has settled its own version of Jarndyce and Jarndyce, that multi-generational probate case that slogs through over 800 pages of Charles Dickens' epic tale, Bleak House. I am talking about the case New Yorkers for Students' Educational Rights, which is an outgrowth of the Campaign for Fiscal Equity, a lawsuit which was filed back in 1993 as a constitutional challenge to how New York State funds its public schools. This 28-year-old case, which was filed the same year as Intel began manufacturing the first Pentium chips, was responsible for defining what the state is constitutionally obligated to provide to public school students, which is a sound, basic education. Just last week, Governor Hochul decided to settle the suit which the state under the Cuomo administration had been fighting. Joining us to discuss what this means for education in New York is the chair of the Education Committee in the state Senate, Senator Shelley Mayer. Great to see you. Very nice. Yeah, I don't remember a time when CFE or NYSER wasn't hanging over New York State. Do you? I don't, but that's really a credit to the parents and the advocates because they never let us forget that this lawsuit, which established this principle, as you said, of a sound basic education, really was never met for all these years. And in 2007, we, uh, I was uh, a staff person, we adopted a standard to have a funding for a sound basic education. But then it was never, it was never fully funded. Well, that, that, and, and that's so because of the recession, the great recession came and we didn't have any money. Well, that was part of it, but also Governor Cuomo, as you and I know, rejected the premise that this was yeah. really cool. What, why was that? And, 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 you know, you've had conversations with him. What, what, what were those like? Well, uh, he, he, his reading of the Court of Appeals decision in the original case was, as a matter of law, that it no longer pertained. I strongly disagreed because the legislature adopted a provision of the education law which remains in effect on how schools should be funded. At the end of the day, one, the law was there, a sound basic education is a constitutional requirement. Two, the standard that we fund schools, not by politics, whether I represent you or someone in a right. different party represents you, but by what students need, is the governing principle of how public schools should be funded. And that's what the legislature said. So we had this responsibility and we fought incredibly hard. This year we were able to really get that done in the budget. And now Governor Hochul has signed this document, ending this lawsuit provided that we continue to follow through. So th this is uh, the funding that the legislature provided to schools this year was unprecedented. Now, this money is going to be distributed through something called the foundation aid formula, right, Senator? And, and right. what does that mean that uh, the state has, has now agreed to? What does the foundation aid formula mean for schools? Well, the foundation aid formula is a provision set forth in the education law that uses some legitimate principles to determine how much each school needs. For example, how much property tax is paid, how many students are eligible for free and reduced lunch, how many are English language learners? How many have special needs? How many are homeless? How does the student population go up and down every year? It was supposed to use legitimate factors to decide need. Now it is not perfect, and I've had a series of hearings about even improving it further, but the legislature agreed that we would fully fund this formula started in 2007 over the next three years. We did the first tranche. This year we got everyone up to 60%. Next year, 80%, and the final year, 100%. So what happens after that? Well, we're not at after that. We are right now <laughs> fighting to make sure that this coming year, in the budget, we adopt the second part. And in fact, this agreement that the governor signed with the plaintiffs is contingent on the state meeting its obligation. Now, the controller has said our tax revenues are higher than projected. Uh, we are very confident that we will have the money to do this. And frankly, this is a commitment that we, the legislature and Governor Cuomo, when he signed the budget 
agree to, and I'm confident, more than confident, that Governor Hochul will do everything in her power to get us there. Okay, so I know you said that we're just talking about this year, but you know, I have to ask, three years down the line, the, the foundation aid formula right now is 14 years old. How committed are you to updating that formula, Senator? I am very committed to reviewing the factors to determine whether they are correct. For example, it uses 2000 census data. Right. Now we are in 2021 and we have 2020 census data. So that's clearly out of date. Uh, when it was adopted, we didn't have the property tax cap, which uh, provides a downward pressure on property tax. So there's a number of things that have changed. And I've gone around the state listening to places where it, it does not work well and I think we should be open to that. And I think some people in the state education department are open to that. But right now, let's not walk away because the underlying commitment of these millions of dollars is to actually improve the student experience, hire social workers, hire guidance counselors, make sure there's art and music in the elementary grades, make sure there is all the support our English language learners and special needs students need. So that's what this money is gonna take care of. Plus, we were able, Susan, to get the federal money that came out of the COVID relief to go directly to schools and not to get sort of snatched by the state. Right. And that will give them money over a longer period of time. It's, uh, it's going to be, I think a lot of people are hoping a new day for schools in New York State. Of course, we shall see. We have been speaking with the chair of the Senate Education Committee, Senator Shelley Mayer. So good to see you. Thank you. Pleasure. Thanks for being here.